here. Oh, my meeting is getting recorded, so everyone should get a consent to ask you if you want to be recorded. All right. Yeah, so if you want to join our PM Apple Camp, you can just copy this address like here. And here is a like plus button. You can like uh, click on this, call, uh, let's call it add workspaces and sign in to another workspace. Would you, could you share, could, in, in, the, in the chat, could you share that, um, oh, the link? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Thank you. Cool. So it's the address you can use to enter the uh, lab channel. And our, the most updated Slack channel is 2020. So yeah, feel free to ask questions in this um, Slack channel. Because uh, if you ask questions in your um, Zoom chat box, it will appear after the Zoom, like our meeting ended, right? So maybe, So it's a long-term way to ask questions, maybe to like throw questions in this 2020 channel. Yeah, that would be the ideal. And then um, the, the other option is to put questions, like George said, in, in the Zoom. Yeah, and we also have Emil and George join us today. I think uh, George and Emil are around for all three days, right? So feel free to ask questions uh, to them. Yeah, we have, um, so George is asking for the link. So if you go to our app bootcamp, so we have this uh, USC BIOS desk GitHub account. And here we have this uh, app bootcamp repo. And if you go to the day three folder and check out the readme. So here is the slides link. Yeah, so I will send this link to the chat box. Yeah. Why is that not working for me? Can you guys access the slides? Um, wait. Oh, I saw a lot of familiar names in our participants today. I saw Trevor, uh, Dr. Pickering is here. And hi, Intira. I also saw Intira. <laughs> Hello, Intira. Hi. Hi. Okay, so we'll start in maybe one minute. Hey, Karen. Yeah, I, I, can, oh, introduce, I can introduce you. Thanks. <laughs> So Josh, do you want to introduce yourself? And Emil, do you want to introduce? Yeah, we, we've been, we've been uh, around the last two days. So, um, okay, so I think that we, we can start. Uh, I, I just shared the, the, so here it is again, if you guys didn't got it, the, 
Oh, we, I said the, all yeah, the so We do have two. So yeah, it's, it's actually, yeah, it's, it's the same. It's the same because we do have the, the contest on GitHub, but, uh, but the, the link that you will have find in GitHub is actually the same link that oh, Karen just posted there. It goes to the, uh, it also goes to uh, her slides. So yeah, so let's, let's start. Let me. Um, I'm still admitting people. Yeah, yeah, I, I will, I will. Uh, well, let's get started. Maybe it's 10, 10, 10 right now. Yeah, so let me, sorry. Let me keep, uh, take out the, um, the chiming, the chiming sound, which is very annoying. Okay, I just took it. Okay, so uh, welcome everyone to the third and last uh, day of the R bootcamp. Today we're going to be talking about reproducible uh, research. Essentially, it's reproducible research automatic reports using Markdown. And today's speaker is Karen Jews. She's a, a PhD student in biostatistics. And she's a very active. Oh, I mean EPI. Sorry. Sorry, EPI. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, she's a PhD EPI student. Uh, you are in second year now, Karen. Oh, I'm going to third year. Third year. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> third year EP, um, and she she's a very important contributor also of the of the uh, Los Angeles uh, LAR user group. So uh, for those of you who haven't joined uh, to the uh, LAR RUC group, I encourage you to do so. We will uh, email some information regarding that. Uh, it's a really cool group. The R community is very big. Karen is is part of it. Uh, ML two and a few of us who have been participating here. So. Um, uh, with that, uh, please uh, welcome Karen, which will, is going to be talking about uh, reproducible yeah. R markdown and uh, how to write automatic reports using R. Yeah, may, uh, maybe I can quickly show the uh, LA East R user group. Oh yeah, that, that's great. That's a great idea. Age. Yeah. So right before the the pandemic, if you uh, if you were here, you, uh, we actually were having like uh, monthly meetings. Uh, and we have this big partnership we actually with, with a lot of other groups in the LA and actually so, so Southern California uh, area. Uh, it's a very big community, very interesting. You'll see people from industry, academia. So it's a great way to connect with others after you finish your master's or your PhD as well. So I recommend you to join in. Yeah, so this is our um, meetup page for AI users. Yeah. Oh yeah, here. Yeah. So we have our maybe a new event this month. Yeah, we have August meeting this month. So maybe I can send this link also to the yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you could copy, yeah. Um, and we again, and again, I'll, I'll, uh, we do have a um, a Slack channel for this. It's very active too. And yeah. We will share it by email later today. Okay, let's uh, maybe get started. Yes. So first I want to uh, maybe give a brief overview of today's workshop. So first I want to introduce what uh, our Markdown or uh, Markdown file is. Um, because there are already a, like, a lot of like really, really great resources out there. So I'm not going to introduce this um, extensively. Um, then I want to talk about how to write text and codes in your R Markdown file and how to knit or render your scripts to different types of reports. And in the end, I also want to introduce some of my favorite R packages using R Markdown, just to give you a sneak peek of different places that we can use R Markdown. So there are like a lot of uh, great packages building on R Markdown, which can help to uh, extend the function of R Markdown a lot. Okay, so um, R Markdown is an authoring framework for data science. So you can use R Markdown file to connect data from like different data sources like spreadsheets, uh, like R database. And then you can uh, to use R Markdown to run your codes, then to generate um, different types of reports for your work, such as uh, HTML file, uh, Word documents, PDF, um, sharing and slides, Shiny app, or a dashboard. So um, there are a lot of um, different ways for you to share your work through a Markdown to like impress your boss or to collaborate with your coworkers. 
So here, uh, right now, you are seeing a typical uh, Markdown file. So uh, uh, a Markdown file is a single plain text with um, three components. So here we have this, um, the first component is YAML metadata, which helps you to um, control and design the entire structure of your uh, Markdown file. The second is a uh, text, uh, which uh, is written in um, Markdown. So uh, the Markdown is uh, like lightweight markup language. And uh, I think it's created by uh, John Gruber in 2004. So this is very different from uh, Microsoft Word, so where you can click on buttons to uh, format uh, words or phrases. And then the changes are visible immediately. But in Markdown file, you need to like add syntaxes to throw in syntaxes to the text to indicate like which words or phrases should look different. And also for Markdown, you also need a software to help you uh, convert your Markdown file, text, Markdown text to the output format that you want. Um, then you might be like wondering why people choose to use Markdown instead of the Microsoft Word. Um, so why write uh, Markdown syntaxes if we can just simply press buttons in the Word to format our text? Um, so there are a couple of uh, different reasons for this. So Markdown, first Markdown is portable, which means uh, we can open it using any um, applications. For example, like you can open Markdown uh, from Notepad or from any code editor such as R Studio. So if you decided that you don't like the application that you are currently using, uh, you can like just import your Markdown file from that old application to another Markdown application that you want to work with. The second reason is that uh, Markdown is platform independent, which means that you can create Markdown formatted text in any device running any operation system. So because it's, um, it's not dependent on any application or any platform. Uh, so uh, Markdown is uh, future proof. So if the application stops working at some point in the future, you can still be able to read your uh, Markdown formatted syntax using any like text editor. Yeah, for example, here we uh, can see this neat word is wrapped with two asterisks. So here the two asterisks are markdown syntax. And also similarly for these two hash size before this uh, markdown sentence. Yeah. So it may take a while for you to um, get used to seeing uh, markdown syntax in your text. So the best way to learn markdown is to just to um, start to use it. So we'll talk about how to write Markdown in detail in the following slides, and we'll also do some activity together later. Okay. And the last component I want to talk about is the code chunk. So the code chunks are called the, like the beating heart of uh, Markdown. So the code in these chunks is run by a leader, so we can um, talk about like details of this code chunk later, but I uh, just want to mention in this uh, curly braces, you can specify, uh, here the curly braces, you can specify your language engine. So right now um, in this uh, Markdown documents, we are using the R language, so we specify R as our language engine, and we can also use other like different types of language engines inside our uh, Markdown document, for example, like Python or Bash scripts. So here the setup is in like optional label that we can add to our, um, our Markdown code chunk. So this label is just optional, just uh, to uh, remind you what this code chunk is about. So uh, this cost is also an optional label and also similar pressure. And you can also add um, different chunk options, like here echo equals force is a code chunk option. So we'll talk about this later. Um, yeah. So basically this argument helps you to control what your uh, output look like from this code chunk.
So first we want to do, uh, maybe we can do uh, activity one together to create a uh, Markdown file. Okay. So I hope that everyone can um, do this activity with me together. So first we want to open our studio. Yeah, let's go to our um, USC Biostas uh, bootcamp day three. So in this readme, I have some codes available for you. So if you want to use our markdown, first you want to install it. So there are like two ways to install it. The first way is to um, directly install it from Korean. And the second way is to install it from GitHub. So this is a development version, which means this is the most updated version, but sometimes this may not be like as stable as the version from Korean. So we can, we can install a markdown from either way. Yeah, so let me know if you have trouble installing a markdown package. Yeah, so I assume we have, we have already installed um, our Markdown package, and then we can, um, in this file, select new file and create our Markdown. So here you can um, so um, specify a title author for this our Markdown file. So for title, maybe you can say, Uh, maybe a uh, markdown file, okay. And here we can also select different output formats like HTML, PDF, Word. We also we can also create uh, presentations from this um, markdown file or like shiny documents. And here we also have a lot of different uh, templates available. So let's go back to the readme. Um, yeah, so if you want to generate PDF output, you will need to install LaTeX first. So in our Markdown, we recommend you install tiny text, which can help you to um, generate LaTeX. And I also recommend this package articles go to this link. So this package contains a lot of different uh, latex formats for um, different journals. So this can be very handy when you want to write a journal in a markdown. And the other package that I want to mention is Tafute Handout. The Tafute package, which can help you to create this type of um, built for um, handouts called Tafute Handout. So one of the most interesting features of Tafute Handout is that um, it can generate this type of built for side notes. Okay. So for now, maybe we can start from the most common um, type that we can create an HTML output. So select HTML and click on OK. Yeah, so right now we have, um, so our Markdown already provide us with some uh, default components, such as this um, YAML metadata and um, three code chunks and uh, uh, Markdown's text. So the, I want to mention the first code chunk, the setup code chunk is a, a code chunk that controls all the behavior of the code chunks below. For example, here we set echo equals true. Uh, we will explain what this means later. So if you set echo equals true in um, 
using this um, op um, Cochang option function from this neither package. Then you are controlling all the behaviors for the belowing uh, code chunk. So all the belowing code chunk all have like echo equals true as default. So if you want to change a specific code chunk, you can like, um, for example, here you can um, specify echo to force. Okay, and how to run each code chunk? Um, we have this um, keyboard um, shortcut, you can press Control Enter to run a specific line of codes. Yeah, since uh, if you don't want to run the entire code chunk. Uh, but here we only have like one line of codes in this code chunk. Maybe we can uh, create uh, two lines of codes here. And for example, if you only want to run like one of the lines, can just um, put your cursor here behind this line or inside this line, doesn't matter, and uh, press Control Enter. Then it only runs this summary class function instead of the entire code chunk. And then if you want to run the entire code chunk, you can just press this um, green uh, triangle button. It, it says like run current chunk. Okay, now you have uh, outputs from uh, these two functions. Okay. So for example, if you have a, a markdown with like several thousands of lines and um, a lot of code chunks, and you, if you only want to run this code chunk, and this code chunk is based on all the codes, uh, based on the like results from above code chunks, and uh, you don't want to like, run all the above code chunk like one by one, like pressing this uh, green triangle. You can just um, press this button that says run all chunks above. So it can help you to get results from all the above chunks. Okay. And the other way you can do this is to um, go to this run editing button. And here are several options for you to maybe run current chunk, run next chunk, and run all chunks above, below, stuff like this. And the other thing I want to mention is this here, the small green um, bottom here. So similarly, if you have a long uh, markdown file, you want to jump into a specific section. You don't want, you don't want to like scroll um, up and down. You can just go to here. Uh, to select the place that you want to go to, for example, the markdown section. But right now, your cursor is here in the markdown section. Okay. So, has everyone created an markdown file? So, your markdown um, file should look like this right now. Great. Okay. So now uh, in our R Studio, you can see this uh, R Markdown raw syntax. But how to get the HTML output? Oh yeah, yeah. Emil uh, mentioned uh, like great shortcuts. So if you want to uh, insert a code chunk in the R Markdown file, you can type in um, Control Alt I. I means insert, Control alt i on Windows. You can get this code chunk. So you don't have to type all like, these three backticks and uh, these all symbols. You, just, you can just press these um, three buttons. Okay, so right now we have this uh, raw markdown syntax. You want to get the HTML outputs. So we have um, two ways to achieve this. The first way is to use the render function from the um, R Markdown library, and then insert your R Markdown title here. And the second way is to use the Knitter button here to knit to HTML. Okay. So how does it exactly work? 
So when you um, run the render function or press the needle button, so the ARM markdown feeds um, the ARM markdown documents to a needle package. And then uh, which this needle package executes all of your codes and creates a new markdown document, which includes the codes and this output. So markdown file generated by Nidra is then processed by uh, Pandocs, which is a document converter. So Pandocs helps you to convert all your markdown document to different types of formats. So this may sound uh, complicated, but this uh, Nidra button actually covers all the steps uh, below. So you don't have to worry about all these steps. You can just simply uh, use the render function or to press this needle button to get the output format you want. Okay, so our activity two is to uh, render uh, a markdown file. You can either uh, use the render function to so type in your render function in the console here, or uh, use this need button. So first we want to give a name for our markdown file, ARMD. Then uh, click on need, need to HTML. So now we have this uh, rendered output from our uh, markdown file. You can see our code chunks and the output is below each code chunk. Yeah, so has everyone got this um, rendered file? So this is a, maybe a most common type of HTML you will get from a markdown file. Okay, so we just went over how to create an RMD file and how to render it. Now I want to um, introduce these uh, three components in detail since you already learned how to um, code in R from the first two days of our bootcamp. But for most of you, maybe it might be your first time to um, learn how to write in Markdown language. So I would like to talk more about this. So first I want to uh, introduce Markdown language and how to write in Markdown. The so first is the uh, handler path. So the left panel is uh, Markdown formatted syntax. And the right panel is, uh, should be the output that you will see from the rendered output. So the first, the one hash side here represents uh, the first header. And two hash sites before this title represents this S2 is the secondary header. So it's that wrong. So for emphasis, if you want to um, put a word in italics, you can wrap this word with two asterisks. asterisks. And or you can wrap this word uh, with two underscores. So here is our raw syntax. And you can see in render text, the asterisks and underscores are both in italics. So if you want to create the bold words, uh, you can wrap these two words in either two asterisks or in two underscores. So now we have these two words in bold. So um, we, also, we can also combine emphasis. So for example, this phrase is wrapped with two asterisks, which means um, this phrase should be in bold, right? And but uh, inside this phrase, this word underscores is wrapped with uh, like underscores. So which means this word should be also in italics. So this word should be in both bold and italics. So here is our um, rendered phrase. Okay. And if you want to scratch out one sentence or one phrase, you can wrap this with tilde. Okay. 
And the next uh, part is about the lists. So if we, we want to come um, to create ordered list item, we can put number dot space before this sentence. And if we want to create an order sublist inside this list, um, we can use two spaces before this sentence and also a uh, asterisk and also space before the sentence to create uh, an like an order sublist. But if we want to create order sublist, we can replace the asterisk with um, the number and dot. But the actual number doesn't matter here. So we can you can like put two, three, four here. Um, but in your render text, it will still be recognized as the first ordered sublist. Okay. So the actual number you put here doesn't matter. So if we want to create a, like indented paragraphs within a list, you can just simply um, put two spaces before the sentence. And also you want to leave a blank line before, um, above this sentence. Yeah, it's very important. Uh, should remember we need a blank line before this paragraph. And also some tricks, um, we can uh, also use minus sign and plus sign, not only uh, using this asterisk. These two sides can also help you to create an order sublist or an order list. Okay, the next part is about links. So we can create inline style link in our markdown file. So for example, here, um, we want to put the, like, the actual words that we want to show in our outputs um, inside this uh, square bracket. And for the link, we want to put the link behind these words inside these round brackets. So here is a render text to look like. So you can only see the words inside the uh, square brackets. But if you click in this link, you will go to this address, the GitHub homepage. Yeah, so it will bring you to this homepage. Okay. And the other uh, trick is that you can add a title for this link. For example, here we have a GitHub homepage in this double quotes. So in your render text, if you use your like mouse hover over this, you can see this uh, GitHub homepage appears. Okay, and the other way to create link is to use a uh, reference style, which means you don't actually need to uh, need to put uh, the link inside this behind this um, square bracket. You can just put a number here, and then you can um, reference the link in your footnote. or you don't even need a number here. You can just uh, reference link using the um, square brackets and the words inside the square brackets. And the URLs and the URLs in angle brackets will automatically get turned into links. So here is the uh, render links for uh, URL and the URL inside uh, angle brackets. Okay, for the images, we can create, uh, we can like um, insert image in our markdown file using like inline text or reference text. So for the inline text, we first need an exclamation mark and then a square bracket. So what's inside this square bracket doesn't matter. You can put anything inside here. It doesn't affect our outcome. And uh, after this square brackets, you want to put uh, the link of the photo or the image inside this uh, round brackets. And you can also like add a title here, like local title text form. And when your mouse hover on this image, like a SpongeBob image, you can get this title. Okay. And we can also write um, syntax in Markdown text. In Markdown file, but um, 
So markdown is not a markdown, so it will not execute your syntax, but it can still show your syntax in a code chunk. So for the inline code, you can use uh, backticks to wrap the code in backticks. So it can, so in the render text, the code is in, has a like gray background, which means there's an inline code. And for a code chunk, you can wrap it with three backticks and uh, also a code uh, like language engine. And in your output, your codes will be in a code chunk with a gray background, and it will be like uh, highlighted based on this uh, language engine. And next is uh, block codes. So you can use this uh, try, um, like, like this greater than sign to uh, create a block codes, a code block. So the last part is most, uh, I think it's most annoying part in Markdown text. So you want to create a table and sometimes you see this built for tables in HTML or in um, Word document created from Markdown file, but this is a uh, um, syntax behind this table. So sometimes to like organize these tables in Markdown text can be very annoying. Um, so uh, some tricks is that you you must like include uh, three dashes here, at least three dashes here to separate the headers there and the rest of the stairs. And the ultra pipe sometimes is uh, the ultra pipe is optional, so you don't have to include them. So for example, this uh, second table. We only have three hashes here to separate headers there and the rest of the stairs. And this table um, doesn't have ultra pipe. But sometimes it's not this uh, second way to create table is not as clear as the first way, right? Okay, now we have went over all the major syntaxes in our markdown. In Markdown. So I think you are ready to go. So our task activity three is to um, create a piece of rendered output like this. So um, our task is to uh, write the Markdown syntax behind this rendered uh, output. So maybe I'll give you uh, five minutes to figure it out. So um, don't worry if right now you don't have R Studio installed. We uh, also found this online markdown generator. I'll send this in chat box. So if you don't have our markdown or our studio in store, you can use this online um, syntax generator, online markdown generator. Okay, click on this link. And then you can write your markdown syntaxes on the left panel. And you can see the output on the right panel. Okay. So um, in this render output, we want to uh, get first a uh, first level header, the hello world first level header. And also we want to get a second level header. And for this sentence, we want to put humans in bold, right? And we also want to create an unordered list. And inside the first bullet point, we want uh, a paragraph or a sentence. Oh, okay. And um, we want to scratch out this sentence. And for the last sentence, we want to put this far superior in italics. Okay, so let me know if you get this render output or not. So we only have like 15 minutes left, so I'm a bit like over time, so I'm going to uh, speed up a little bit. Maybe just give it like two minutes, two minutes to figure out.
Okay, let's show our solution. So we can always go back to the solution later. So let's go to the next section. So we already went over uh, how to write in Markdown language. And then I want to talk about how to um, use code chunks and how to set up code chunk options. So I have a trend passing by. So, um, so first, um, this is the default code chunk in uh, Markdown. So you don't have to figure out what uh, what's meaning of these uh, functions. So basically, um, it's a uh, so we are using the leaflet package to create an interactive map. And here in the code chunk, we only use this R to specify our language engine, and we don't have any other any any other like um, options. And the output should look like this. It includes a, a code chunk and also a interactive map. And in this map, we in this map we specify the uh, ordinates of this Soto Street building. This is where our uh, boot camp usually takes place. So if you click on this pin, like no one is here right now. And the second uh, code chunk has two. Um, two options like echo equals false and evaluation equals true. So echo equals false means uh, you don't want to show your codes in your output because sometimes you want to present, you want to present your results. You don't want to, it's like to show your codes is not necessary. So you want to hide your codes and only to show your results. And evaluation equals true means that you want to uh, you want to like execute this code chunk. And this is the default evaluation equals true and equals echo equals true is the default. So that's why we didn't set any uh, options here in code chunk number one. And it's, it's still like output your codes and your um, map. And here we set echo equals false. And in your output, you can see uh, our code chunk has been hided and only the interactive map has shown in these slides. And our code chunk number three is to set echo equals true and evaluation equals false, which means you want to show your codes but not, to, but you don't want to like uh, execute your codes. And here is the render output should look like so there's only code here and without output. And some other um, options that we can use to control the size of our output. For example, if you only want to like, if you want to like shrink your map into like 40% of this default size, you can um, specify 40% here for out width and out height. Now we get a much smaller map here. Okay, so as we uh, mentioned before, we can also use like other language engines in uh, our Markdown document. For example, we can use uh, C or even SAS. Yeah, I haven't tried this before. Maybe I can try this in the future. We can use SAS and Python, Julia in the uh, Markdown file. So here are some um, examples of the code chunks using other um, language engines. So this one is using Python, and this second one is using Bash scripts. So for Python language engine, sometimes we need to like specify the path to the engine. So this could be very useful when you and your collaborators are using like different types of languages. For example, if you are using R and your coworker is using Python and you guys are working on the same project. So this could be very helpful for you to um, collaborate on a same uh, Markdown document. Okay, so um, we already went over um, text and code chunks. I want to talk a little bit about YAML uh, metadata. So we can use, uh, these are like some default components of YAML metadata. Um, it includes title of this uh, markdown file, author, date, and output. 
and we can also like specify some other um, options. Let's see. Yeah, for example, we can set this um, table of content. Um, yeah, we can set TLC equals true. And this yet. Or get arrow. I should put it down and indent this TLC. So now we have this table of content here. So we can uh, click on this include plus to go to this section. And on Markdown, go to this first section. And sometimes if you have a long uh, Markdown file and your TO, like, table of content is always uh, in the beginning of your markdown file so every time you have to like go back to your table of contents but if you don't want to do this you can set up a float table of contents and this yet so right now you can like no matter uh, how you like scroll down scroll up this uh, markdown file you can always see this table of content here And uh, the last option that I want to mention is the same, same option. You can set the same of your HTML document. For example, I want to use readable theme. You can see we have a different uh, font size and font format in our HTML file. Okay, so there are several other options that you can explore after our workshop. Okay, so uh, then I want to talk a bit about like different um, packages that is very uh, used for building on uh, Markdown. The first one I want to talk about is Citer package. So this package um, can help you to cite papers in a Markdown file, especially if you have like Zotero installed, you could uh, download the this uh, BIP text integration extension for, for Zotero. And then the Citer can sync your references with Zotero. So you can cite references from Zotero through Citer. So, and every time you add a new um, citation into Zotero, your um, like a markdown file can automatically detect this updated reference. So I can quickly show you a demo here for Citer. Let's see, Citer example, okay. So in this way, you can write your articles in uh, our Markdown. So in this our Markdown file, I set up this um, citation style, American Journal of Epidemiology. So also you need to put this um, citation style inside this uh, working directory. And in the YAML, we also have this um, library, reference library, which is exported from uh, Zotero here, reference by. And if you want to cite a reference here, you can um, cl uh, click on this add-in, because I already installed Citer package. So you can uh, already see this insert citations option for you and then you can click on these insert citations and then choose uh something so right now you are uh, link your um our markdown with your zotero software so you can like randomly pick a citation and insert citation and then need your article So right now you can see uh, in this HTML file, you have this sentence and you have a citation number one and under your reference portion, you have this um, citation footnote here. Okay.
Okay, so this is better. And the second package is uh, Sharingan. Sharingan is very powerful package to create slides because I, um, I create this entire slides in Sharingan. And uh, also embedded this Sharingan slides inside my slides. This is an uh, introduction of Sharingan by EHDN. So you can check out this later after our workshop. And another package related to Sharingan Again, it's called Sharingan Extra. So this adds a lot of like advanced functions for Sharingan slides. For example, if you uh, you can like only uh, you can just throw in this one line of code, and it can give you a lot of features. For example, if you click on O on your keyboard, you can see a entire view of your Sharingan slides. So it's very uh, convenient for you to jump into different slides. Also, the webcam function is um, I'm currently using. So if you press W, a keyword on your keyboard, uh, the W uh, on your keyboard, you can, on your keyboard, you can um, open or turn, turn on or turn off your video. But right now I'm disappeared and then uh, click W again. And I'm back. So uh, you can also use shift W, these two, um, press these two on your keyboard. And then um, you can like switch your camera position. And the next one I want to talk about is page down. So this one is, can help you to create a resume in um, HTML or PDF. Also help you to create um, posters. And Vita is also a package that can help you to create a resume. And the difference between Vita and PageDown is that Vita uh, creates resume in PDF, but PageDown is creating a resume in HTML. And PosterDown is also a great package to help you to uh, create uh, conference posters in different formats. And BlockDown is a really great a uh, powerful package to help you to create a blog to, um, so you can generate a steady website based on our Markdown and Hugo. Yeah, so uh, in the end, I have some recommended readings for you. So like um, the Markdown book from Yihui and some change it for uh, Markdown and Markdown and also a 10 minute tutorial for Markdown file. Okay, thank you so much for attending today. <laughs> so, George, do you have, uh, do you need to leave some minutes for questions? Yeah, sure, if, if you wanna stick, uh, stick around. For those of you who uh, have other things to do, you, you are free to go, so thank you for coming. Uh, yeah, I go in two minutes. Yeah, yeah, no, and uh, yesterday we, we stick for a few extra minutes, so if, if it's okay if you want to stay around and if and anyone has a question, I think that people can actually yeah. talk, I think, let me see, uh, hello, yeah, you can, you can, you can unmute yourself, if you want to do a question, make a question, Karen. So yeah, so my, my, our Markdown, Markdown, it's 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 really great. So it, it helps a lot, especially for those of you who are going to start working in a lab or actually in, in any context. I've seen people like writing entire papers using Markdown. I don't usually do it, but that's because uh, sometimes some of the analysis that I do like take just way too much time. So it's uh, for me to include in a Markdown, but for me, it might be a bit complicated. But for like, I don't know, for lab reports, if you are like doing this, uh, uh, if you wanna create a quick website, I, I've actually like made websites in a few minutes if when I have a meeting and think, things like that, which is really, really interesting. Uh, yeah, so someone's asking uh, what's meaning of evaluation uh, equals true and evaluation equals false. So evaluation helps you to control if you want to execute your codes or not. So evaluation equals true means uh, it will, in your like output file, it will execute your codes and show your reports. But evaluation equals false is that in your rendered output, it will uh, only show your um, codes. You will not like um, run your code actually. And um, Karen, also would you comment on um, uh, caching? So oh, yeah. if you have a okay. lot of, so I don't yeah. think you can talk about caching. 
<laughs> yeah, so if you are uh, running a markdown file that has a lot of um, heavy computing involved or um, mainly that, then it's not um, efficient to run the whole thing every time if you don't have to recompute everything every time. So there are a lot of options relating to um, caching or cache, you know, you create a cache for code that's created in the past. And um, so you want to set up at the beginning of your document cache equals true. And then you actually have to go through and specify for each code chunk whether or not that is being cached or not. Um, there are some examples that we can share um, of that as well. But I think Karen mentioned this and anything that you have questions on, someone has a question has had a question on before, and there are fantastic resources online for answering all of these all of these questions. Yeah, I especially recommend uh, going to the book down website. Again, so we shared the other day. I just I'll just type it again. So I think it's book down that or or um, and you, there you will find a lot of uh, online books free to download that talk about our markdown and all the things that we have uh, mentioned here in the in the bootcamp. So uh, regarding what Abigail was mentioning, uh, yeah, I, I, I sometimes I also include like C plus plus code within the code chunks. And you can cache that as well. So you may have like a complicated function that you wrote in some other language, in this case, like C++, it works with RCPP actually. Um, and then you can cache that so you can use it later on in, in without having to recompile the entire thing every time you, you, you run, you compile the code. So it's, it's very useful. Okay, so if there are no more questions, I think uh, we're done here. Um, thank you again, everyone for coming. This was great. We will share all the um, uh, materials online soon. Uh, I uh, actually, I, we, we have recorded this session. We have the first two recordings as well, and they, they will be shared on YouTube, hopefully um, by the beginning of next week. So uh, we'll let you know. So thank you very much. Thank you.